Heenan left after me. After you? I left before Heenan. Okay. The first three to leave were Hogan, David Schultz, and Okerlund, and I was right behind them. Right. I came when Vince called. How did I? Because uh, Vince had told me I went back to Vern after working for Vince's father. Right. And I went back to Vern, and, and but before I did, Vince told me I'm going to call you in about six months, and then you're going to come and work for me forever. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I went back and worked for Vern for about six months, but I knew the call was coming. Right. You know what? You know what, uh, why? How how Vince did it with me? He waited until he had booked Minnesota, and then he had me jump one for that card. Right. I left the AWA and went to the WWF in that card. Did you give Vern notice through a, a mail and then you did promo? Telegram. Telegram? And that was under Vince's orders. I was going to go do it face to face and Vince said, I don't want you to do that. Because he said, all that will be is a confrontation and a fight. He said, just send him a telegraph stating that you no longer desire the bookings of the AWA, that you are now with the WWF. He was my boss, so I did what my boss told me to do. Wow. When some of the certain guys like Hogan and Oakland jumped ship to Vince, did you see uh, the, the writing on the wall for Vern Gagne and his company? No, but Vern didn't know how to fight a war. Right. See, I'm, I'm a Navy SEAL. I know how to fight wars. And the, the mistake made there was... Always take care of your own backyard before you venture into the enemy territory. Vern made the mistake. He saw Vince come into his territory, so he immediately came out here and he wasn't prepared for it. If he would have just simply protected his own backyard, he may have survived. But when he tried to expand, he right away he was in no position to do it. It was an ego thing. Well, you've run in my territory. Now we'll see how you like it if I run in yours. Bad move. Did Vern he should have a, protected his own backyard. Did he have enough talent and big names to draw when, when he lost Hogan and, and Oakland? I mean, sure, he could was, have. You know what? May, you know what the final straw was for me with him. What was you that? be the judge. I was with Masa Saido then, who I could lovingly called Mister Torture. Right. Never feared nobody when Masa was my partner. He was tough, <laughs> Mister Saido. Right. And we. Right before it happened, we had we had wrestled lacrosse, Wisconsin, and we did an angle to come back in the cage, right? We came, I got my payoff, we came back in the cage. Vern and Greg had gone to their Aspen vacation like they always did right after that. We came back in the cage match, the house jumped by ten or $15,000, and I got less money. I got paid less. I came up to Carbo, I go, what is this? I said, the house jumps 15000 and I get paid less. Wally Toussaint says, hey, Vern makes the payoffs. Don't talk to me. Well, Vern was off on vacation. I dawned on me. We were paying for it. That was us paying for Vern's vacation. That was the final straw for me. I looked at Carbo. I said, what's my incentive to draw a house then? I hope I wrestle in front of nobody. Right. He'll give me more money. Right, right. I said this, and that was the last straw for me. I thought if... And, and what you were just waiting for the call wait, anyway. And, but I'd already gotten it. Right. But... Uh, uh, why wouldn't I jump at that point? You know, the, here's a, you know, he, he pays me less now what he should have been doing. He should have been padding us more to keep his talent. Doesn't it seem logical to you? Okay. You want to keep your talent, give him, give up some. Right. Don't take. And he took. And that was the final straw.